Mariseal by Iowa Forever. Part chapter 17. Rainbow Dash landed outside Ponyville, looking around for any pony that she could talk to. Finding no one, she decided to walk to the town, heading into General Direction of Rarity's boutique. Some other ponies noticed her and waved, but her thoughts kept distracting her as she barely noticed them. She moved on, not really watching where she was going, and nearly running into a few ponies. She barely even noticed a familiar buzzing coming toward her. Hey! Rainbow Dash! Rainbow managed to snap out of her days and saw Scooter racing toward her. The filly pulled to a stop next to her idol, gently pushing her scooter back and forth and looking up at Rainbow Dash. What's up? Oh, nothing much. She smiled weakly and kept walking. Scooter following. Just wanted to talk to Rarity about things. Things? Scooter raised an eyebrow. Why would she need to ask Rarity about things? They're the kind of things she'd be interested in. Scooter put her scooter to a stop, looking at Rainbow Dash. You're not getting into that girly stuff, are you? No, of course not. Then, if it isn't girly stuff, then what is it? Things a filly like you should be worrying about. Scooter gave Rainbow Dash a weird look, but did not press the mare. But enough about that. What have you been up to? Uh, Christine, mainly. Scooter buzzed her wings. I was looking around for other things for me and the other Christine to do. And then I saw you and I thought, hey, maybe Rainbow Dash knows a lot of cool things to do. So... Do you have any cool things to do? Do I? Of course I do. I remember that there were these caves near the river that Fluttershy used to talk about a lot. She says he found a bunch of weird things floating around in them. Really? You know where they are? I might. Go get the others and I'll sell them to you. Scoogle now in excitement turned her scooter around, flapping her wings for extra speed and racing off into the crowd. Raven Des was prepared to continue towards Rarity's boutique when there was a loud crash. Here are the six cut in as he raced towards the sound, tugging out of saddlebags that weren't there. In a rush, Skulu clicked a small fruit stand. No pony was hurt, but a large amount of fruit had been spilled on the ground. Rainbow Dash released some of their tents and planting her hose back on the ground before scurrying over to Skulu. I'm fine, Sophilly said, dusting herself off. See? I'm fine. Good to hear. Rainbow Dash went to the mess. Think you could help me clean this up? Yeah, I probably should. Rainbow Dash smiled and walked over to the stricken fruit stand, tossing a few pieces of fruit back into her respective bins. Scootaloo pushed the fruit towards the rainbow dash. Once that task was finished, the filly began searching around for her scooter. She found it, lying before two fillies she did not want to deal with right now. Very impressive, Scootaloo! Dara Diara said, smirking. I think you, like, doubled the amount of damage you caused since your last screw-up. Yeah, totally! Silver Spoon added, the two figlies skilling as Scootaloo took back her scooter. Hey, it could be worse, Scooter grumbled. I've seen the floor crack every time you walk. Diamantiar glared at the Pegasus, her face flushing red with anger. You better take that back, Scootaloo! Rainbow Dash decided that now was a good moment to air fiend, set towards the three fillies. Leave her alone, Diamantiara, the older rare said once he reached Scootaloo. Oh, well, if it isn't, Miss has to protect Scootaloo for everything. Who's trying to get me into trouble for something I didn't do? Hey, you did steal Tierly's notebook. No point can prove that I did that. Rainbow Dash gave to Philly a blank stare. Get out of here. I don't have to do anything you say, you know. No pony can boss me around. Silver Spoon! A voice barked from behind them. Two fillies froze in terror as a pony approached. A gray stallion with almost no mane. He stopped behind the two and went down, stealing Kenny's causing the two to quiver. Would you care to tell me what's going on here? Um, n nothing Silver Spoon stammered, shoveling her hose a bit. We, we were just talking about that mess over there that she made. Silver Spoon pointed over towards the damaged cart. Smiling seamlessly, the stallion was unimpressed. We'll discuss this at a later time. Take your friend and return home. Yes, father. Rainbow Dash's eyes widened slightly as their jaw lost a bit of tension. Silver Spoon has a father? The stallion looked up at her, expressing softening slightly. My apologies for any discomfort my daughter may have caused, he said. Thanks, Rainbow said. Oh, I... Don't mean to sound rude, but I don't really know who you are. 
That's understandable, as I don't really enjoy visiting this town. Bad experiences. The stallion held out a hoof. My name is Alexander Silversmith, but you may call me Lex. We had an alarm installed in here? Why, yes. And we didn't install security devices to stop people from breaking into the studio. Why? Uh, budget. <laughs> And you are? Rebo Jazz, weather manager. Oh, really? Silversmith smiled. I was always fascinated by weather management. I tried working on a device to handle minor weather issues in case there was an absence of Pegasi, and, well... He pointed to his head. That didn't work out so well. You're an inventor? I dabble from time to time. I would love to stay in chat, but I have other matters to attend to. Good day. Oh, that silversmith left Scootaloo. Scootaloo looked up at Rainbow Dash. He did back at the retreating stallion. Did back up at Rainbow Dash. Did you know about this guy? Rainbow Dash asked. Why would I care about Silversmith's family? Scootaloo got back at our score. Anyway, I'm going to get Apple Bloom and Sweet Bell. Then we can check out those caves you were talking about. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Scootaloo gave a small salute and raced off. A cloud of dust trailing after the filly. Rainbow Dash was now focused on her, though. She was focused on Silversmith, while seeing the stallion as he drifted through the marketplace. He seemed to have no real direction, though he stitched you a few glances back in her direction before heading down another street and out of sight. Something deep inside her told her that Silversmith was up to no good. Silver Silversmith? Gray Pony? No money? Tells him for Pony to call the legs? Yeah! Yeah, I don't know who he is. Applejack reared back and bucked, knocking down a tree's worth of apples. So... What's the deal with him? Look, Arley, I say I know who he is. Never said I know him. Uh, is that the same kind of thing? Rainbow Dash asked, raising an eyebrow. No, I don't. Applejack fans gathering dispatch of apples and moved on to the next tree. I'll buy him once. When I was leaving the main hating, showed up and all the orange was there last night. First night I was there. And he said he was working on some digging machine for air slaves. He did say he was an inventor. Yeah, well, it was downright weird to be honest with me. Be fancy all one minute, then he slink off to who knows where. At least Twilight said goodbye if so he ever wanted to get back to science. Maybe he just likes being alone. Applejack looked at Rainbow Dash. I don't think so. I'm good at reading ponies, Rainbow. He didn't seem like the lower trap. Seemed my smug. Like he was looking down on all of us. Then, what's he doing living in Ponyville? Don't all the stobby ponies live in Carolot? He don't live in Ponyville. Rainbow Dash raised an eyebrow and followed Applejack further into Yotzer. What? But then how comes Silver Spoon? See, so he lives here. He doesn't. Just going to drop this whole family here from a couple of years back. I think he lives with my hand, but I never saw him around all that much after that first night. Well, then what's he doing here now? Please, boy. I only accustom like rarely, and I don't think she'd want to know a lot about, about Silver Smith. Well, is there anything else I can talk to? Blake Max my up a few times, but he's in Appaloosa till next week. Other than him, I can't really help you. What about Pinky? She's probably throwing a welcome party for Rainbow Dance was interrupted by a horse hoof to the nose. Don't talk to Plinky. Don't say anything to Plinky about Cyril Smith. Was the party really that bad? There weren't no party. Applejack sighed and bade Rainbow Dance to sit. I happened a couple of weeks before I get moved to the town. Plinky just moved in with the cakes and got into the habit of giving new ponies wake up parties. Well, one day, Silversmith comes in for who knows what reason. Plinky took one look at him and ran away, screaming her head off. I was taking the apple to the doctor's appointment when Plinky comes up and run, raving about some evil, evil stallions he's seen coming to town. I let Plinky know mine. I thought she was just playing Plinky. She was scaring apple boy with something fierce. Plinky just locked herself inside Circle Cube Corner until Silversmith left. She was all twitching until he yelled moved in. Wow. How evil do you have to be to scare Pinky? Wait, this guy scared Pinky? I know it's hard to believe, but that's what happened. Mary Dash shook her head. Pinky, the mayor was saying constantly about facing fears, and loved Nightmare of Night more than any other holiday in Equestria. Was scared of some bald, high-class pony? Made even less sense than Pinky's usual nonsense. Where does Silver Spoon live? 
Raymond Dazz asks, standing up to fully face Applejack. Now, hold on there! You ain't gonna do something stupid, rat! I know you're my protective of us and you're, well, superhero. But I don't want you to pick a fight with this pony just because it's something of pious. I don't start fights just because I want to fight. So he told me Silversmith was no, was no good. I want to make sure that I'm right. Well, as long as you don't get yourself hurt. That was a point to the northwest. So he lives in a big old mansion near the road to Canterlot. Lots of trees and stuff. So it's kind of hard to see for the road. No point I know has ever been up there. So I can't really tell you what to expect. Yeah, don't worry about it. Ribbidas took off, circling over the farm. I am Super Bear after all. And with that, he was off. Drawing up plans on how to best confront Silversmith. Ribbidas looked over Ponyville once more before heading northwest. Keep flapping in the breeze. Under the cover of darkness, he was almost invisible. A shadow in the night sky that no pony would mind. After spying her destination, she slowed down and skimmed over the trees, sweeping her head back and forth in order to spot any ponies that might have been hiding. The mansion was massive, dominating a chunk of land the size of a small town block. A grove of trees blocked the view from the road, and Raven Task could spot a few ponies, with several guards milling around outside. She rose higher in the air to avoid being seen, and followed her gaze to zoom in onto the house. Her X-ray visit allowed her to see every single room in its entirety. Silversmith was sitting at a table in what Rainbow assumed was a dining room. Perusing through the few pieces of paper, Silverspoon was sitting at the opposite of the tent of the table, slowly eating a small salad. She did not look up from her food, as so if she was afraid of drawing Silversmith's wrath. Rainbow Dash flew in a little closer, slowly her ears to pick up any conversation they may have been having. So, about that little incident in the market, Silversmith said, not looking up at Silverspoon. That wasn't my fault. I'm sure it wasn't. However, you handled the situation is less than satisfactory. You drew attention to yourself and turned multiple ponies against you. And once every pony is against you, you will suffer. Instead of waiting for a more opportune moment, when any comments made would have assisted your position. Yes, father. The two were interrupted by a third pony, a skinny unicorn wearing a tie. Um, sir. Silversmith looked back at the unicorn. Back from Manhattan too soon. Well, there wasn't much left to set up. Silversmith smiled and looked at Knight Silverspoon. Go up to your room and finish your homework. We will continue discussing later. Yes, father. Silverspoon got up from her seat and left, passing the unicorn on way out. Now, all the assigned ponies have their attacks. Yes, sir. At any point at my attack has been bribed, as per your orders. Raymond Dass raised an eyebrow and inch closer. Good. Silversmith rose and crossed the room, heading towards the door Rainbow soon led to an office. Make sure to send a message to our friends and ask them if they are still interested in my deal. Well, we did. They said you could burn the Tartarus. Silversmith stopped for a moment and looked at the other pony. Well then, tomorrow should be an interesting night for them. Uh, yes, the unicorn visited a little. You don't think this will work, do you? Um, well, I said this is the best idea going after... They didn't accept my deal, and now I have to convince them to. But, 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 I mean, trying to undermine a small company is one thing, but... But nothing. What alternative would you have me do? Go after main enterprises? Silversmith snorted. <laughs> oh yes, that would work out so well. They probably have spies in our establishment before we could even think about how to undermine them. But I never said... But you were thinking it. Silversmith turned to continue towards his office. Go back to Main Hat. Once everything is finished, come back and report to me. Yes, sir. Silversmith smiled slightly. Said so this seriously and never dreamed about the ass. I always hated the name Magic Tech. He muttered before stopping in front of his office. On your way out, would you be so kind as to notify the local authorities of a potential break-in? Break-in, sir? Some pony set off the silent alarm about three months ago. There's nothing here to steal, but we may as well get rid of each of such distractions. So that's what that freaking was! Raven Dash muttered as he turned and shot off into the night towards her house. Guess I know what I'll be doing tomorrow night. The following night found Rainbow Dash hovering over Manhattan, scanning every street for signs of trouble. Twilight had managed to procure a layout of the city, allowing Rainbow Dash to find most of the major magic tech fellows very easily. A few clouds as cover, she was able to remain seen to the populace, something she was enjoying since there seemed to be a higher percentage of Superman fans in Manhattan. 
Oh, well, you look at that. Ten Pony Tower. Ow! Raymond has a dust fans eating a few cupcakes Pinky had given her earlier. She spotted something out of the corner of her eye. Pushing her cloud cover closer, she saw a small group of ponies, mainly unicorns, moving towards the building with a large box. A quick scan saw that the box was loaded with various explosives, but none of them seemed to be marked with anything that could incriminate Silversmith. She had bounded her cloud cover just long enough to take cover on top of the roof of the building they were heading towards. So, what do we do here again? One pony in the rear of the group asked. Just set this up and run for it. The lead pony said, We spent three hours talking about this. What's the matter? You scared or something? Man, I just never said so. You remember that story about those guys in Trahim? What? You mean the idiot about that wanted to be Super Mayor's arts nemesis? Raymond asked, frowned. Why does every pony have to make a big deal about that? No, I mean those other ponies. They're all nuts. Besides, this is Manhattan, not Trihem. There hasn't been a vigilante here in 20 years. Well, I guess I do count as a vigilante. I should talk to Celestia about that. Raymond Dash crawled closer to the edge of the roof and looked down. Once he has the ponies pulled out crowbars, hammers, and a saw. Alright, the soon take a look. Make sure no ponies watching. And yeah, that's my cue. Raymond Dash looked off the roof of the building, spun in one air, and landed on top of the explosive crate. Excuse me, she said, catching every pony off guard. But if you are planning on doing some remodeling, I'll have to see a copy of your builder's permit. The ponies looked at her in shock and confusion, unsure how to spree. Where did you come from? The lead pony asked. Krypton, if you really want to know. So, we don't make a lot of make a mess here. Why did you turn yourselves in and save us all the trouble? You're not Superman! One pony cried. Superman's talented, and the colors on your suit are weird! Raymond Dash rolls into the air, looked at the pony, crossing her four legs, allowing her eyes to glow red for intimidation. Do you want to prove that? The pony swallowed and shook his head. Good. Now go find the cops and turn yourselves in. The ponies nodded and ran off, dropping their tools to shed excess weight. Raymond Dash chuckled before picking up the crate and turning and flying towards the harbor. I'll get rid of this, and then make a few sweeps, just in case Silversmith paid off different ponies. Silversmith was sitting in his office, looking for the three forms. Silversmith was on her way to school, and he deemed that, if important, he would have joined her. However, work took precedence and was more enjoyable. He had to make sure everything was ready once news from Manhattan arrived. I am sire. Silversmith looked up. Sitting in the doorway was a unicorn, different from the one he had met the other night. May I inquire as to why you are here? Well, um, I think you should see the paper. The unicorn produced a copy of the Manhattan Times and passed it to Silversmith. Upon opening it, he saw the front page was dominated by an article that read, Super Bear Soft Saboteurs! The article giving a fully detailed account of how Silversmith's plan had been foiled. Do they know it was us? He asked, not even looking up from the paper. I don't think so, sir. The unicorn stumbled around nervously. We can't risk having this get out to the public. Get in touch with some of our friends at Mainhead and have them eliminate any pony that was there that night. Yes, sir. The unicorn turned and left. Silver Smith looked at the newspaper once more, focusing mainly on the image of a tan pegasus in a blue suit and red cape. So, you wish to interview with progress, Super Bear. He thought, his glare intensified, then I'm afraid we're going to be in disagreement with each other. Smirking, Silversmith put out a small pad of paper and a pencil and began to scratch out a few rough outlines. We'll see how well you perform next time we come into conflict. Tell me, do you know why the number 300 is so indicative of Yi and you? It's your weight in my IQ. Oh wait, I got one more, I got one more! M as in map, no, 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 no. I as in idiot. M as in moron, and L as in letter! Okay, I know one of my favorite Superman in the movie, guys, those are clubs. <clears throat> a person could read War and Peace and come walking away with a simple adventure story. Another person could look into a piece of gummy wrapper and say they found out the secrets of the universe. Chapter 18. Rainbow Dash was standing outside Carousel Boutique, looking around to make sure no pony was watching. 
Yes, she had gone to Carousel Boutique numerous of times. Brady was still her friend after all. But she still had a rep to uphold. She swallowed and pushed the door open, making one last check before stepping in. Coming! Came Rarity's sing-song voice. The white unicorn strolling in with several rolls of fabric grass in her magic. Oh, hello, Rainbow Dash. How may I be of assistance? Hey, Rarity, I want to talk to you about something. Rarity frowned, setting aside her fabric. Is something the matter? Um, not really. See, there's this cult that I like. Sort of. Rarity guessed slightly before using her magic to close every curtain and door in the boutique. Oh, a coat? My dear Vinda, you should have told me about this somewhere more secure. You don't know what kind of ponies might be missing in on us. I can see halfway around the world if I wanted to. I think I'd be able to deal with a few new easy ponies. Rarity asked Flutter Wings continued. Anyway, he... Well, he and I are meeting up Saturday. You are? Rarity smiled wide as he tried to place for a few seconds. <laughs> I'd have to be a daughter, Rainbow! I promise it here now, honey, but you simply must tell me when you get back! Yeah, but, well, there's kind of a small problem. Rarity's friend returned. What kind of problem? Well, you see, he doesn't know it's me. I'm afraid I don't quite understand what you're saying. He doesn't know I'm meeting him Saturday. Is it a blind date? Then I'm afraid I don't have any experience with... No, he knows it's me, but he doesn't know it's me! Well, how can he not know it's you, but... I was in my costume when he asked me out. He thinks he's going out with Superman. Rarity was silent. That that is a problem. Rarity turned away and began pacing. You don't plan on telling him anything, right? Rarity, it's just a small get together. It's not like I'm getting married or anything. But if you do plan to continue this relationship to its logical conclusion, then you'll have to tell him sometime. I would probably suggest you just act natural. How? Rainbow Dash, don't be dense! You've been Superman for quite some time, so you don't need my advice on how to act natural. Just do whatever Superman would do and you should be fine. Okay, but... Well, I've never been on a date before in my life, so I figured you know about... date stuff. And... Now it's already starting to be nervous. Then I haven't had a stable relationship in five years or so. Really? Yes, that's why I had such high hopes for Prince Bluebrand when we met, went to the gala. And well, that didn't work so well, and now did it. Considering he tried to kill me and Princess Celestia, no it didn't. Yes, that's not too. But if I can offer just one warning. Just don't rush into any relationship. Take it as slow as you like. Just enjoy yourself a little bit. Okay, but when he starts doing... things... If you get Rainbow, you are a superhero, and he, most likely, isn't. I think you can handle it yourself. I guess. Thanks for the advice, Rarity. My pleasure. Rarity pulled a few spools of thread from a nearby stand and set to work on a new dress. If you have any other questions, feel free to come by and ask them. Silversmith had set up a research and development lab beneath his headquarters long ago, when he first made his fortune. He did not spend as much time down there as he did in the early days. But now that he had new ideas and new foes, he was prepared to get back into the business of inventing. Those power crystals I asked for were acquired. He asked the passing attendant. Yes, sir. We're installing them into the prototype now. Good. I'll deal with the diagnosis once the initial test is complete. The unicorn nodded and wandered off to the other side of the room. Silversmith prepared to head into the testing chamber when another pony approached. Sir, there is a pony by the name of Steel Wing asking for you. Silversmith frowned. What does he want? He didn't say. I don't have time to deal with whatever problems he has with my establishment. Tell him to come back tomorrow. Sir, that may not be the best option. Silversmith leaned in closer and glared at the pony. Tell him to come back tomorrow. Y yes sir. The pony leaned back towards the door, stepping out of sight. There was a brief argument before a pace has entered. Silversmith sketches a still wing. Do you know it's never good to gain a pony's trust if you don't respect their wishes? Silversmith said, as Steel Wing marched towards him. I don't have to be lectured by you. Steel Wing said, I've come here to ask a favor of you. And I am in the middle of a dangerous test, so I don't have time to handle personal favors. Do you know who I am? I'm Gerald Steel Wing of the Equestrian Army. If you will not listen to me, I can have you arrested for opposing justice. Those his opponents have threatened me with that before, yet here I am. Silversmith sighed and looked down. What's your problem? That's why I finally found you in sending assassins to collect the alimony. I'm trying my best not to think of a Deathstroke pony. 
it's not hot, easy. I want to see Sergeant Calabaron. This isn't a personal issue. I'm facing an incredibly dangerous enemy, one that's more powerful than anything you can offer as a comparison. And that enemy is Superman. This piqued Silversmith's curiosity. Normally, he did not like the work of other ponies, but seeing that Steel Wing did not have any love for Superman was an interesting factor. Well, it seems that we have some common ground, General. Perhaps I've been too hasty in dismissing you. Yes, you have. Silversmith nodded and began walking towards the testing chamber, Steel Wing following him. Back to my original point, I need something to either capacity or kill Superman. I presume you are capable of developing such a device? Killing her is a bit out of the question at this point. I do not have enough information on her strengths or potential weaknesses. I do not want to risk the chance of making her more powerful. However, I think I may have stumbled upon an idea. The two ponies entered the testing chamber. A whitewashed room lined with lights. In the center of the room was a device that looked like a small cannon. And there's a door on the south side of the room. You are a military pony, right? You know the dangers of trying to subdue a potential captive, right? Of course! Now, give that pony the powers of a god, and the task becomes nearly impossible. However, I think I have remedied the problem. Silversmith turned to a nearby Ted Disson. Send in the first test subject. The test is denied and nodded towards the door. The door is open. It's now set the pony. A Pegasus mare dressed in a yellow bodysuit and goggles. What does this device do? I can't say. That would ruin the whole point of testing. But to put your mind at ease, the device is painless, so no pony will be hurt before the device is ready. Silversmith and Steelwing walked over to a blast shield, and they were soon joined by two more technicians. Turn it on. The te first technician nodded and pressed a small green button. There was a dull hole before a beam of light shot from the cannon and fell to Pegasus, hoisting her to the air. Steelwing frowned, obviously not impressed. So... Long range telekinesis. If I asked for that, I would have found a unicorn. Ah, but there's more to that. Silversmith went to the test subject. Try to move your wings and legs. The mare died, began to squirm around. Legs and wings not responded to anything she did. I. I can't move, sir! Silversmith smiled at the still wing. Anything struck by this suffers from immediate neural shutdown in their legs, and in this case, wings. Things of it like getting an Aztec during an operation. A normal pony to wear us off after an hour or two, and I think this is more than enough time to take Supermare into custody. Are you sure that device will work at Supermare? There was a pause. This is only a prototype, so it hasn't been fretted yet. We'll just have to test it through trial and error until we can find a frequency that will stun some pony like Supermare. I may have only one shot at this. True. I want ten of these, and anything that can be used to keep her from escaping once we do have her in custody. I'm sorry, I got pride. However, this technology isn't exactly free. I'll send some pony over to negotiate payment with you. Steelwing smiled. I'm glad we had a chance to work on this. My pleasure. Steelwing nodded and walked away. I see the test saver, leaving Silversmith alone with his technicians. Uh, shall I start call me and you to have to start production? Finish the calibration test, then we'll start production. I am afraid you may have another delay in your progress. A third voice said, Someone sort of turned and saw a green and purple unicorn with a weird suit walking into the room. Who are you? My name is Thrill Drox. The unicorn said, And I wish to help you against Superman. How can you help me? I have several encounters with Ketonians during my life, and I know many of their weaknesses. Also, I am familiar with stasis technology, so I can help you perfect your device. Silversmith raised an eyebrow. He was a little put off by Phil Drox's monotone, but at this point, he needed all the help he could get. What's in it for me? A lot. I will help you eliminate a powerful threat. Also, you will have access to all my knowledge of technology in the universe. Think about it. You will be getting a great deal of funds, and with some of the devices my knowledge can help you create, Pony Guy can profit for greatly. Well, I am working with another Pony Steel Wing, and he may not be too kind if I devote more of my time to. Steel Wing thinks he's a knight in the scheme of things, when in reality he's closer to a pawn. His impulsiveness may reveal what I need to know about Superman. But once it, he dies, he's no longer any use to me. What exactly do you need to know? 
That is not important now. Know that Steel Ring will not object to anything. And if he does, I know several methods to make him comply. There was a pause. What exactly do you want from me? Raymond Diaz fizzed for the class on her suit. Behind her, Tank was snacking on a few leaves. The tourist looking up at her as he prepared to leave. Well, Tank, looks like I've got a date tonight. Raymond Diaz walked over and knelt down in front of Tank. So, uh, Fleshlight said something about tourists living a really long time, so... Have you ever been on a date before? This only caused the tourist to blink slowly. Didn't think so. She sighed before flopping down on her stomach. Oh, Tank, why am I so nervous? I mean, I can lift airships with one hoof tied behind my back, fly around the world in a few seconds. Why am I so freaked out for one cult? Tank blinked again. Maybe... Maybe I should have talked this over with someone besides Rarity. Like a bomb. Raymond looked over at Tank. The tortoise looked at her for a moment before licking her face. Cousin Rainbow to bless. Thanks, I needed that. She nuzzled Tank before standing up and heading towards the door. Using her X-ray vision to make sure no pony was nearby. Seeing no one, she slid through her door and took off towards Tryingham, running back towards Cloudsdale when she was certain she had gone far enough. She considered increasing her speed. But remember, she had blown out half the windows of Las Pegasus the last time she decided to went too fast. She passed over Pine Field and headed towards Cloudsdale, making minute assessments in her flight path to find the best route to avoid being spotted. She spotted him soon enough. He was standing just outside the main part of Cloudsdale, searching through the darkness for her. A small basket rested on a nearby cloud. Despite her curiosity, Rainbow Dash refrained from using her X-ray vision to see its contents. She straightened out her wings and began to glide. Landing on a small bounce on a nearby cloud. Hey there! She called, waving with one hoof. Hey! He said, once he spied her and returned to wave. Don't mind my basket! My cousin thought I should bring along some snacks! Nothing wrong with that! Rainbow Dash led over to the next cloud and landed next to Thunder Lane. So, anywhere in particular you wanted to go? Well, Thunder Lane shuffled around a bit. Maybe he's as nervous as I am. There's this little hill just outside of Ponyville, so maybe that'll work? Sounds great. Thunder Lane blessed a little, and the two set out for the hill. They didn't talk much during the flight, the two merely exchanging a few looks as they glided in the air. Several times Rainbow tried to say something, but she merely stumbled over her words trying to find something. So, um, Super Mayor, Thunder Lane began. Yes? I was just thinking, you know, the other day with the airship and all... Forget it was a stupid question. No, I don't mind. No, really, I don't think... Just tell me what you're going to say. Wow, that came out harder than I expected. Thunder Lane hesitated a moment before speaking again. Well, you weren't just waiting around for that to happen, were you? <laughs> no, of course not. But I do remain vigilant. I just don't fly around looking for trouble. Well, I tried that once, and I ended up getting cloned and blew up part of Baltimore. Really? Yeah. At least Trixie says she was sorry. Rainbow shook her head. Doesn't really matter, though, does it? I, uh, I guess not. <laughs> hey, there's the hill. The hill in the question was just outside of Sweet Apple Acres. It was one of the spots Rainbow and her friends loved to meet up at. There were a few bushes off to one side. One of sized raccoons was rummaging around for a snack. Two pegasites circled once before landing, startling the raccoon, causing it to rust off into the bush. So, do you come out here often? Well, with somebody else, no. I thought about it, but just never got around to it. No. Have you ever done anything like this? Not really. My parent, my adoptive parents, they used to do things like this all the time. I snuck out after them a few times. Oh, I don't think my parents ever did anything like that. Come to think of it, I don't think they ever did anything together after my brother was born. Probably when they got divorced. Oh, sorry to hear about that. Nah, it's okay, I've gotten used to it. My brother's too young to really remember it. Ah, there was a long pause. So, food? Right, I forgot! The two sat down and enjoyed a small salad and plate sandwiches that Thunderling brought. They chatted about different things. Her powers, chances of getting into the Wonderbolts. Rainbow had to rein herself in to avoid revealing her identity. And a bit about their families. They would have kept on going, but Rainbow decided they had other duties in the morning. And the two prepared to part company. So, thanks for inviting me out here. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thunderling said before Blessing once more. And, well, maybe... We can do this again? Another pause. Yeah, I like that. 
Rainbow Dash gave him a small smile before taking off, turning back towards Trihem and flying off into the night. Thunderlane took his time getting home that night. He circled past the weather factory and Wonderful's training facility before turning towards the north, straight towards a small cloud house where he stared at with his brother Rumble. Maybe I'm being too forward. No, everything is fine, and if I was being too forward, he's a superhero. Yeah, so you can handle it. Cleared his mind before landing or entering the house, flipping on a few lights as he did so. So, how did your little trias with the Kryptonian go? All sense and soy that Thunderlane possessed vanished. He set his eyes for a few moments before glaring at the source of the voice. Hello, Dad. It was not a trias, it was just a meeting. Nothing more. Call it whatever you like. Still Lane said as he stepped from the shadows. If you're looking for Rumble, he's not here. Thunderlane continued. Besides, didn't Mom tell the course to keep you away from him? I'm not interested in Rumble. I'm interested in your little thought rendezvous with Supermare. Thunderlane blinked. What do you care? Can't you just stay out of my personal affairs? Not when it's close to your safety is on the line. She is a credible and dangerous threat, and you fraternizing with her is putting dozens of points at risk. Fraternizing? I know one of your little military students is dead, so don't talk to me like I am one. Seriously, threat? She's not dangerous! The mayor who caused damage to several major metropolis areas, attempting to roll she's not dangerous. Okay, so she causes collateral damage, but she's not dangerous in the way you're suggesting. Really? You've been caught up in her speeches about how she's sent to guide Equestria, about how she's just the same as every pony else. She's just a mayor who happens to be a superhero. She's an alien! Or were you so wrapped up in her charms that you forgot about that? So what if she's an alien? She's here and helping ponies and... And nothing! This is all a front to her plans to take over Equestria. Mark my words. But this time, this is over. You will be her personal slave. You're insane. Get out of my house. Oh! Can we say that to Batman for, for, for on Batman vs Superman? Is that what you think? That I'm insane? Is that what your mother taught you to think over the years? Suddenly, a thunderlane snapped. One minute he was standing at the door. Next, he had still been pinned to the wall. One of praise to strike. Don't you dare bring Mom into this? She treated me a rubble better than you ever did. You've never cared about your... All you always cared about was your career. Pretend to get questioned. What about us? Did we even amount anything in your views? Not only would have hit Steel Wing, but chose to throw him towards the door. Get out of here. I even want to see you close Steel again. There was another pause before Steel Wing spoke. She really has you under her charge, doesn't she? He sighed. Here I thought you would be reasonable. With that, Stealing exited the house and took off towards Canterlot. Reasonable. Thunderly thought, I hope she keeps your skull in if you meet up with her.